The purpose of this module is to introduce uh, the Texas Instruments MSP430 uh, microcontroller, uh, the development board we are going to use in the lab, and a few very simple code examples. The introduction to MSP430 will be done in experiment 2, which is just one week, and then following that we are going to use the microcontroller as uh, the controller for the DC-DC converter between the PV module and the battery in experiment 3. This page summarizes the resources you have available for the, the microcontroller. The particular version we are working with is 5172. Um, there is a user's guide that's linked on the course web page. Uh, the data sheet that's useful to just check the, the pinout. Uh, we will see the pinout in a moment here as well. Uh, Code Composer Studio uh, is available on the lab computers to do the software development and debugging. And there is a library of code examples uh, that you can look up uh, to see how various peripherals are actually uh, used on this microcontroller. In particular, we will talk more about a code example that's prepared by uh, Professor Erickson uh, that gives um, a way of setting up a high-resolution uh, pulse width modulator. Here is a block diagram of the microcontroller. It has, uh, as usual, uh, a host of programmable um, multi-purpose uh, I.O. ports and a variety of peripherals that are uh, very useful in the lab, in particular high-resolution timers um, and uh, analog-to-digital uh, converters. Uh, the chip is primarily intended for low-power applications, but it can be clocked up to uh, 25 megahertz and operated from 3.3 volts. Uh, here is the pinout of the chip as a reference, you will notice that many pins have multi-purpose. For example, pin 19 uh, can be used as a general um, I.O. pin, uh, it's called P2.2, it's port 2, pin 2 of port 2. It also uh, can be used as the output 1.1 um, out of the, uh, the timer D. Um, in the default settings, the microcontroller comes up in a low power mode, clocked at just 1 MHz, but we will talk about how that can be uh, stepped up to the high frequency um, operation. Uh, we should also note that the, the main power supply for the microcontroller is 3.3 volts, and so you will expect to see the I.O. Uh, logic levels to be 0 and 3.3 volts, and indeed that's what we will be using in the lab. Uh, there is an option to provide a higher voltage supply up to 5 volts for the I.O. pins, but we will not do that. Uh, here is the development board uh, that simply includes the microcontroller and header pins, so for easy access to the, um, the pins of the microcontroller. There is a JTAG port uh, to connect the uh, JTAG box, um, which is uh, then hooked up to the a USB port of a computer, which is how we do the, um, the uh, upload of the uh, code on the microcontroller and debugging. Um, the board also includes a, a jumper to select an onboard LED a jumper to select whether the power comes from the JTAG or from an external power. That external power source can be particularly useful when you want to operate the board as a standalone away from the computer. And of course in the lab we will do that uh, very often when we have the whole uh, PV system operating away from the, the host uh, PC. And then finally there is a jumper right here that selects whether the supply for the microcontroller itself is 3.3 volts or can be an external 5 volt supply we will always use 3.3 volt supply <clears throat> just to mention related to the external power 
uh, that external power can be between 5 and about 15 volts. Okay, and then again here is just for reference a uh, portion of the uh, schematic of the, the development board. Uh, the complete board is linked on the Experiment 2 page. Uh, one point to note is that there are uh, several ground pins. There is an analog ground at pin 4. That pin we will use as a reference uh, when we measure with the scope voltage probes um, the, uh, the values at other pins. Uh, there are two digital uh, grounds, uh, pin 22 and pin 30 on the board. Both digital and analog grounds are tied together to the ground of the complete board. Peripherals on the microcontroller are uh, controlled by um, registers in addressable memory. Um, in, instead of knowing where exactly those locations are, uh, we will be working with a header file that contains um, um, names for uh, the variables and constants that are important for uh, the microcontroller and so our code will always include uh, that header file. Uh, here we have an example of a table of how uh, port 1 can be programmed. Port 1 uh, contains 8 bits that are named P10 to P17. And first to note is this P1 cell um, uh, register that is used to decide whether the port is used as a general purpose I.O. with a zero or it's used uh, for uh, or selected for a peripheral module when, when one is written right here. Let's suppose it's used as a general purpose I.O. then the direction uh, register P1 dir uh, decide whether it's uh, an input or, or output uh, and then finally once you have set that up, then you can read from that port with a, uh, from uh, the location P1 in or write to that port the location P1 out. Here is a very simple uh, example. So P1 uh, direction is uh, ORed here with uh, hex 1, which sets uh, pin uh, P1021. Uh, which sets that pin to be in the output direction. Then the second line shown right here, XORs uh, P1 out uh, with 1, and that really means that the value at uh, P1 uh, 0 is toggled uh, with this uh, C line code. In the bottom, we have a line of code that we are going to use always in our main um, routine that uh, disabled the watchdog timer. And finally on this page here we have a complete code example that is uh, that shows how to toggle the value, the logic value at the output um, on the pin uh, in this particular example P2.2 which is really pin 19 on the microcontroller. Uh, you see uh, start with a line that disables the, the watchdog timer, uh, sets the direction for that particular pin to be the output, and then an infinite loop uh, where that uh, the logic level at that pin is uh, toggled. Uh, so this is the complete code that can be compiled and uploaded to the, the microcontroller, and uh, this is what you will be doing as a, as a first exercise in um, experiment one, except uh, we will work with pin uh, um, the port P10, which is where the LED is connected, and so you will see a blanking LED if everything works uh, works well.